Pastor Troy. Hey, Pastor Luke. Hello. It's been a long time since I've seen you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very long time. Yeah. Uh, welcome to lesson three as we continue to uh, work through Luther's small catechism. Today we're going to take a look at the second and third commandments. Okay. Uh, so we're working through, again, God's rules, God's guidelines, but God's parameters for uh, our, our lives, how he, his will for our lives, and really remember that commandments are actually for our good and for the good of those around us. The Ten Commandments give a direction and a purpose to our lives. They do. Uh, God wants us to live according to his will, and the commandments help us, guide us in, in, in doing that. And so the Ten Commandments also, God gives them in love, but they show us how to love God and love other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we can divide the commandments in, into two, two sections. Okay. Uh, they're called the, the two tables of the law. Right. Moses got two tables, right? Like yeah. I'm holding it. They weren't on an iPad. But two but slabs yeah, of stone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the, the first section, the first table, can be commandments one through three. Right. And they primarily concern our relationship between us and God, or yeah. God and us. Like a vertical. We think of God as up. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, we're going to finish out the first table today. Uh, this, the second table of the law, commandments four through ten, deal with our relationships with other people. So a horizontal uh, relationship. Horizontal. Yep. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's good. Good hand movement. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so uh, again, we're going to be in the the section, the explanation of Luther's small catechism. So uh, in this latest edition, on page sixty-seven, the top of page sixty-seven, we have the second commandment: "You shall not misuse." The name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, use satanic arts, lie, or deceive by his name, but call upon it in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. Give thanks. You and I have these memorized. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, that's another thing that uh, historically, and it's a good thing, it is helpful to memorize these. Mm -hmm. we, are, we have online quizzes, and I guess you could just use you could use your book for those quizzes, but I would encourage you to work on memorizing. Mm -hmm. The more you talk about it, the more you work through it, yep. you get it memorized. Well, and again, these are if the Ten Commandments are well in all of Luther's small catechism, but if this is meant. These are the basics of the Christian faith. We ought to know them well, and they're meant for us to actually talk about. Them. Mm -hmm. Like you and I, we enjoy doing this, mm -hmm. but also we're talking through. Oh, this is what it means. This is who God is. This is what it means to follow Him. Mm -hmm. And at forty-three years old and thirty-four years old. We're still learning, oh, this is why mm -hmm. this is important. Yeah. But I, speaking of memory, though, I memorize this commandment as you, some of us memorize it as you shall not take the Lord's name in vain, mm -hmm. which is meaning don't use it for no reason yeah. or poorly, yeah. like cursing or swearing. OMG. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, well, why shouldn't we take the Lord's name in vain or misuse the Lord's name? Well, God's name is holy, and it is important. And so we, just in the same way that maybe um, when we think about people that are really important to us, and maybe it was um, Grandpa Dale, mm -hmm. a really special guy. We don't say, oh, Grandpa Dale, he was so bad. Yeah. Man, Grandpa Dale, this is such, what a special guy. What a gift from God that he is. So I think that's, that's one reason, because his name is holy. It is holy means set apart. Mm -hmm. And so how we use his name is a reflection for how we show who we know and trust that God is. Um, and then it, it shows that to other people. I don't... Yeah, well, if you take a look at the central thought, again, on page 67, that first paragraph, when we trust God with our hearts, we use our lips to call mm. upon him as our creator yeah. and redeemer. And, you know, if, if we misuse God's name, if we take his name in vain, if we curse, we swear, we use satanic art, all, all these other things, we are not honoring God with our lips, with our actions, with our, our heart, our thoughts. Um, again, so we're breaking not only the second commandment, but as we said in our, the last uh, lesson, the last video, you're breaking the first commandment too. Right. We are not, you are not fear loving and fearing, loving and trusting in God above all things. Right. So, and there is a pattern that we want you to pick up that generally happens now in the meanings that Martin Luther wrote for the commandments. So in this case, 
um, when it says, what does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not. Here are the ways that you don't keep the commandment. Curse, swear, use satanic art slash witchcraft, lie or deceive by his name. Don't do those things. That is not Mm -hmm. showing who God is and who you are in him. But then he says, here's how you do it. Mm -hmm. Pray, praise, but call upon it in every trouble, Mm -hmm. which could be prayer. Prayer. Lord have mercy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Pray, praise, and give thanks. Yeah, so again, the commandments are just, they're not just don't do these things. Right. They're also, we'll do these things. Because they're good. Yeah. And they give life and mm-hmm. they build up. Yeah. So the question, so I have a question here that I, one of the questions that I appreciate in this section is 43. On, on page uh, 68. Right. For what purpose did God reveal his name to us? So revealing means God showed us his name or God told his name. He told his name to Moses. Um, Moses, who are you? He says, my name is Yahweh or I am. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that goes back to the first commandment, you shall have no other gods. Human beings and even the first man and woman, Adam and Eve, they didn't give God a name. Oh, we're going to call you Yahweh. Mm -hmm. But God said, this is my name because they're creatures and God is the creator. So... It is also a blessing that God tells us what his name, so we don't have to just start uh, Herman, Gary, Susie, yeah. whatever your name is. Yeah. No, we know. And so when I say, Pastor Luke, I can get your attention. Mm-hmm. And so it not only tells me who you are, your Pastor Luke, the son of your parents, uh, the brother of your sisters, um, but also, it, so I have some information, but it also gives me access to you. It gets your attention. So there's a, a relational aspect to that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. We know God uh, by name, and we can call upon him and pray, praise, and give thanks to this God that who we know, and we know yes. him by name. Yeah. A name that we do not want to misuse. Exactly. And so the other thing, and we think about it, we're created in God's image, so we also then give names to things. Mm-hmm. So parents give names to children. You have three cats. Yeah. You are their master. You gave them names. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't give you a name. I don't. You don't speak cat language. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But um, th- there is that we're created in God's image, so names are significant and mm-hmm. important. Ties into baptism. Yeah. Um, so it's good to go know the name. That also then will come up. Well, um, but call upon it in every trouble. Pray, praise, and give thanks. When we get into the third major section of this small catechism, the Lord's Prayer starts out with an introduction about the name our Father who art in heaven. So that's what I had on question 43. You can see some more there, I, I think it mm-hmm. generally Yeah, again, there's, talks there's, about there's that. multiple questions concerning the, here the second commandment, and you can look at those commandments, right. or those questions, and uh, you can see Bible references that talk about it. And going to the New Testament, Jesus means the Lord saves, mm-hmm. and we proclaim Jesus' names. Yep. Name. All right, well, let's, uh, let's move on to the, the third commandment. Uh, which in this section is on page 74, so the third commandment. Do you remember it? Remember the Sabbath day yeah. by keeping it holy. Well, I also got it right in front of me. Uh, what does this mean? We should, fear, love, and we should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. And so the, the main thought to this, uh, in the middle there of page 74, God invites us to rest reflect on his word and receive his forgiveness in order to strengthen our faith in him. Yeah. So God created the Sabbath day uh, for, again, for our good. And he wants us to rest from our labors. But a part of the Sabbath day is actually coming together in worship, coming to church and to receive God's many good gifts that he has for us in worship. Not because he needs a Sabbath day, but because we do. Yes. Yeah. We, uh, as again, as human creatures, we need, we need things. And one of the things we need are the, the good gifts that God gives us uh, specifically in, in, a, in worship. Yeah. Uh, and in Christian worship, we, God gives us through his word, uh, whether through the Bible or the preaching of the sermon, uh, through this is an altar. The altar, the yeah, yeah. sacraments of uh, communion, baptism, confession, and absolution. God gives us forgiveness, life, and salvation. So the Sabbath day is a day that we set aside, that is set aside for us. Yeah. 
to receive the gifts that God gives, mm -hmm. to get get out of the the off the treadmill of life, I mm -hmm. guess, uh, to stop refreshing our Twitter feed or the Instagram thing, and to receive what God gives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and part of the worship service, we receive what God gives us, but then we are also uh, return. Like there's the uh, we. We praise God. We sing. We give thanks to Him. We Amen. pray. We uh, we give offerings. Hallelujah. Uh, so there there is this other component to worship, but it starts with God. God gives to us. And then and then it ends. And this is a cool thing I think that that we get to do as pastors. So at the end of the service, we say, "The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you His peace." Look, because He's been giving you the peace that comes in and through his son. He's mm -hmm. been giving you um, grace and love that is, is overflowing, and then you're given that to share it with others. Mm -hmm. But we never outgrow or mature beyond the need to come back into God's house and receive these gifts. Yep. And that connects to the question I would like to look at for this command. Okay. Uh, question number 52, which is on page 78. Why is it vital for us, for Christians, to gather with fellow Christians in public worship? Well, we've already been talking about that. But one of the main things is when we worship, when we gather together for worship, God is actually present here. Yeah. He's present with us. Yeah. And it is good, as you just said, good to come in the presence of one another, but also into the presence of God to receive the gifts that he is, gives us, mainly forgiveness, life, and salvation. We cannot get to God but God comes to us. God comes to and us. And this yeah. is a holy place. Yeah. And God has a holy name. Yeah. And he has good things for us right. to give to us. Um, but there's also this other component that, you know, I don't go to worship just by myself. I'm not the only Christian. No. Uh, I worship with other Christians, other uh, believers in Jesus. And another really important part of public worship is gathering together with other Christians. Yeah. Uh, we build one another up. Um, I, I, as pastor, I need you here. I yeah. need you to, to build me up. Uh, whether you're a little kid or uh, an older an older believer, I, I, I need to be in fellowship with you. I, amen. I mean, we, so this is where we are a family, mm -hmm. and, and it is better when everybody's here. And sometimes we come together and we cry together, and sometimes we come together and we laugh together. Sometimes the youngest among us fuss, and even sometimes when you're 34 or 43, you might fuss. <laughs> uh, but it is better when everybody's here. We come together and we sing. Mm -hmm. We sing not just the Nebraska fight song, but we sing about what God has done and is doing and will do in and through Jesus. Mm -hmm. We sing that Christ is risen. We say, Alleluia. Mm -hmm. We say, Amen. Uh, it, it is a, an awesome thing that's easy to take for granted. Yep. And it's, again, we, we gather around God's Word in worship. Uh, we, we can't get enough of God's Word. We need God's Word. Yeah, I, as one seminary professor said, faith can never get enough of the gifts that God gives. Mm -hmm. And God doesn't ever stop giving. No. And, and then it's, it's enough to, it's more than enough so that we can keep giving it away. Mm -hmm. so, so worship in that sense then, as, as, as we say as Lutheran Christians is, and you touched on this, is we first come and receive what God gives, and then we respond. We can never give, pay back no. everything that God has given to us, um, but we, we always need that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we'll go ahead and, and wrap up there. So, again, uh, if you have more questions, you can take a look at uh, the second and third commandments of how to honor God's name, but also how do we remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Yeah. Uh, so we'll wrap up here and we'll continue next time as we continue moving through uh, the Ten Commandments. Cue the theme music. Yeah. We don't have any theme music <laughs> yeah. yet. Maybe you could play it. Zoo or something. So we'll see. Okay. <laughs> All right. See you later. This is where we need like.